So a few years ago, I created a video called Starting a Successful Construction Company, where I talked about basically starting a construction company in general. And for a long time after, I really wanted to make a video about starting a commercial subcontracting business. And today is the day. And if you're a GC, don't click off the video yet. I got something for you too. So many of my clients that are general contractors, they're doing both GC work and they're also bidding packages. So what is a package? A package is basically where you're coming in and doing like a full interiors package where you're doing like five trades or six trades where you can come in and negotiate the deal as a whole rather than coming in as just a painting contractor or a drywall contractor. So this is for GCs too. Actually, my biggest client that he's a GC just landed a $400,000 interiors project with one client and I have another client that he has a residential business and he's getting into commercial and he just landed or he's about to land his first $1.1 million contract, which is basically, it will make his whole year because that's what he was already doing in residential, spinning his wheels, doing all this little stuff. Now he's gonna be doing big stuff. So if you're a GC or a sub, you're residential or you're in commercial, it doesn't matter. This is a new revenue stream that you can add to your business almost overnight. And this video, I'm gonna give you a crash course on exactly what you need to do to start and to grow a successful subcontracting business. All right, so here's my discussion. Disclaimer. Everything that I'm going to teach you, I either learned with my own experience or I learned it from somebody that knows more than me, or we figured it out testing with some of our clients. And this is the only way, this is the best way to grow a construction company. So I always say this, I didn't make this stuff up because I either learned it through experience or I learned it from somewhere else. So this is the very best on how to take your business to the next level if you're a subcontractor. By the way, if you're interested in maybe working with us through leads or estimating or consulting or training, I'm going to put a link here in the video somewhere in the top where you can actually schedule a strategy call with me or one of my team members where we can see exactly what you need in your business and how we can help you take you to the next level. All right, how would I start a construction company, a successful subcontracting business today? Like if I started a brand new LLC, how would I do it? All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna, I don't wanna waste too much time on this, but you gotta get your insurances and you gotta get your license, simple. And this you can solve through a phone call to your agent or you can go get your license. Every uh, building department is different, so there's gonna be different laws in different states. At a minimum, you need your general liability insurance two million dollars total one million dollars per occurrence the second thing you're going to need is your workers comp so i know you can get by with like workers comp exempt but when you're bidding for gcs they need the actual workers comp so go do that call your agent for that i'm not going to waste time this is not a revenue producing activity so that you can do with a phone call all right so the next thing i'm going to talk to you about is one of the most powerful strategies i can ever teach you it's actually responsible for one of my clients selling over 20 million dollars worth of work in his very first year of construction. I'll show you, I'll tell you more about that in a second, but this is what I call the master list. And I stumbled upon this one day when I was doing my prospecting, I was working in commercial drywall and I was doing prospecting. I said, you know what, let me, let me start calling the list. Maybe somebody has some work that, that we can pick up, you know, on the fly. So I grabbed my phone and I literally went down the list. We had our, our CRM and I said, all right, let's go, let's call the first guy. Hey, how are you? This is Daniel. We've been, we've been in the past for you. We've done some projects. I'm interested in working with you guys again. What projects do you have coming up? And then they would say, well, I'll forward your information to the project management team. And if we have something, we'll give you a call. So I kept doing that. Boom, boom. I just kept doing that, right? And I run into this company called By His Grace Construction. And I say, you know, I'm a Christian. They're probably a Christian too, just by the name of it. So I happened to call. And I don't know, maybe this is like a godly intervention or something. But I call the number and the same thing. Hey, I'll pass on your information. And that night, or maybe it was the next day, I get a phone call from a project manager named JC. And he says, hey, we started our demo on this job. I need a price 911 because I need to hire a drywall contractor ASAP, 911. So I was able to bid the job, I walked the job with him and he awarded us a contract within two weeks of the day that I made that phone call. Crazy, right? And it was a $450,000 contract. So I taught this to one of my clients named Matt Hensley. He's a plumbing contractor from Arizona and he sold in his first 13 months over $20 million worth of contracts. It's crazy because he focuses on like home tracks and big developments. So his projects are big. So whenever he does this prospecting, he's not looking to do like one little house or one of something. He wants to get, you know, a, a contract of 50 houses for, for plumbing. So he has a story. I'll put the clip in a second. And I, actually, I'll put a link also so you can watch the video where he tells you exactly how he did it. But basically what he told me was he watched my video on the master list. I taught him. He went to a few of our consulting calls. He made his list over a weekend. The Monday, he started calling people and doing the same thing. Hey, I'm interested I'm interested in working with you. Hey, you got something. You got something. You got something. And he, he walked out of those that, that Monday. He spent the whole day calling and he landed like five potential bids. And so he started bidding them. He started landing his first contracts. And then that got him on the radar to one of his national suppliers, Ferguson. They have some national event in Las Vegas. He went to that. He met, met a bunch of VCs and home builders. And then when he came back, he started getting contracts and contracts and contracts. So the master list is what propelled 
him, it was like the domino that started. It propelled him to take his business from $600,000, which he had gotten his own, his first contract alone on his own. But then when he met me and he met my team and we started helping him, it took him to the next level. Now, how do you do it? It sounds pretty ridiculous, right? But what's happening is everybody, you know, you've heard of word of mouth, right? Everybody's like, I've been in business for 30 years. I don't do any marketing. I do word of mouth. This is like putting word of mouth on steroids. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to literally grab your phone. You're going to go into the app store, download an app that can export all of your contacts into a CSV file or an Excel file. It's gonna get a little techy for some of you. If you're not good with the tech, do it old school manual, write it down by hand. But that's so time consuming, it's crazy. We all, if we've had our phones for a long time and we transfer our data, we all have thousands and thousands and thousands of contacts. And the same thing in your email. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through your email, anybody who you've ever worked with in construction, a superintendent, a project manager, an office manager, somebody that works at their office, a secretary, whoever, a janitor, <laughs> it doesn't matter. These people, if they are not the point of contact, they can lead you to the person that is the point of contact. So for example, if you talk to a secretary because you've worked with them in the past, they can lead you. You can say, hey, I'm interested in working with you. And they're gonna say, hey, talk to my project manager. If you talk to the janitor, same thing. You might have the project manager that you worked on 20 different projects on, call him up and say, hey, we've worked on 10 different projects. You know my work, let's go. It's that simple. So here's a pro tip. You can actually go and hire an assistant that can do all this busy work and they can do it for you for like five bucks an hour, some crazy number. So here's what you're gonna do. Next, what you're gonna do is after you make your master list, try to get at least 100 people. Like you have 100 people on your phone list that you can potentially go, go after. This is the free way and this is the best way because you're gonna go straight to the source of all the people that already know you. This is your hot market, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna call them up and you're gonna say, hi, John. And then you're gonna have a little bit of small talk. Hi, John, this is Daniel. How you been? How are the kids? How's work? How's business? Are you guys doing good? I remember last time we worked on this and this and this project. How's everything going? Great. Well, listen, the reason I'm calling is because I'm expanding my business and I wanted to see how we can work together again. Or can you point me to the right direction of the, the right person? And what's going to happen is either they themselves or the PM or the superintendent, they have access to a job or they're going to say, hey, actually, the person to talk to is this guy. Or maybe maybe they started at this company, but by the time a few years later that you talk to them, they might be at this company so they can get you in with your new with their new company. That might be the way to do it. All right. So the next thing you're going to do is we're going to get on a million and one bid list. <laughs> well, maybe not a million, but we're going to get on a hundred bid list at least. That's the goal. A hundred. And, the, and then we want to do this in a very short period of time. We want to do this in the next 90 days. So this is like like we're hitting it hard. We're hitting the pavement hard. All right. It's, we're doing a lot of work in a very condensed period of time. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to spend at least every single day and you're going to do you're going to look up projects from Dodge and Blue Book. So Dodge and Blue Book are lead platforms where they publish contact information and they publish the drawings and all the information you need to do your prospecting for almost all the commercial projects in your area. The way they do it is it's, it's kind of like twofold. Part of their systems, they have researchers that they go into like the building departments and they have a lot of contacts in construction. So they get to publish all those projects. That's why a lot of times when you go in there, there's just contact information. There's no plans. Now, the other half of the projects are GCs, developers and architects. They post their projects because they want bidders. So sometimes the owners, they need GCs and then the, the GCs, they're looking for subcontractors. So what we want to do is we want to be the sub trying to go after the GCs. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll through it. You're going to find the contact information. You're going to get, usually you'll see the architect's information and the owner. And the, but what you're looking for is the general contractor because you're the sub. And you're going to use a similar script as the one that we just used above, but we're going to say the following. Hi, John. My name is Daniel with I Am Builders. I know you're working on the ABC construction project. You'll know the name of the project because you'll see it in their platform. So you're going to say, I know you're working on the ABC construction project. I'm interested in bidding a proposal for framing and drywall. Can you also add me to your bid list? And also, what other projects do you have coming up? Boom. So you hit the three questions. Can I bid this job? Can you put me on your bid list? And what else do you have coming up? Boom. That's the magic. That's the secret sauce right there. You want to do this. You want to allocate one hour per day every single day for 90 days. And you want to get on at least 100 bid lists. All right. That's the key. Now, the pro tip here is you kind of want to create a separate email because you're going to get bombarded with invitations to bid, which is the point of this whole thing. You want to get so many leads that you have to cherry pick or that you can cherry pick. That's what you want. Now, if you want to see me doing this live and actually doing a demonstration of it, there's going to be a link up here above me somewhere. And I'll also put it in the description where I actually open up Dodge and I go through it and I show you how to do the emails and how to actually basically how to click the buttons and what to say and how to copy and paste and send it. Super simple. So at this point, you're going to be getting like 50 projects per week to choose from. Like you obviously can't even bid 50 projects, but you're going to get 50 projects. And the next problem you're going to have is you're not going to be able to estimate all of them. So I got a solution for you too. So number three is you want to bid a high volume of projects. All right. You can't just bid like two or three jobs a month. You can't, especially as a sub, you need to have a, a high volume of projects. So when I was in commercial drywall, we were doing $7 million a year in sales. 
And the way we were doing it is we were bidding 30 to 60 jobs a month. So if you were a terrible salesperson and you just bid 30 to 60 jobs a month, you're gonna hit a few million dollars, guaranteed. But because you watch my videos, you're gonna become a great salesperson. <laughs> so you wanna start bidding at least 10 jobs a month, 20 jobs a month just to start, but you wanna reinvest and build up that volume because the more you bid, the more you're gonna win. It's that simple. Now, here are some things to look for. So uh, smaller jobs will be awarded quicker. They're smaller contracts, but they're usually a little, a lot quicker. Tenant build out stores, restaurants, things like that. They usually award within one to three months, sometimes up to six months, depending on the permitting and the financing and all that stuff. But usually it's less than six months. The larger jobs, they probably don't even hit starting till six months, so six months to a year. So the strategy is do both. You're gonna bid some jobs that are smaller jobs for cash flow that get awarded quick, and you're gonna bid some big jobs that are gonna be for like, like those are the home runs you're gonna make. Those are your investments. So if we're looking at real estate, the little, the little jobs are like flipping houses, and the big jobs are like buying you know, 10 story buildings is the similar concept. I want you to see it like that. Now I used to advise against little guys bidding big projects because I used to say, oh, they'll never give them to you. The way we got in was we would start with smaller projects, work our way up, and then eventually get the bigger stuff. But recently, because I've been experimenting with many of my clients, some of my guys are, like I have one of my guys, he's a residential contractor. We just started bidding bigger stuff. We just finished bidding a million dollar project for him and he's in the running for it. So I'm like, why are we only advertising, or not advertising, but why am I promoting only to bid small jobs? No, man, bid big jobs. If you're able to finance them and you have the crews and you have the expertise to do it, by all means, attack. What happens is if you're a small guy, the GCs are going to get nervous because can this guy finance the job? Are they going to have the crews to do it? Like, like, do they seem like they know what they're doing? That's what you got to convey. And that's why visiting in person, I talk about this a lot in all my other videos, visiting in person, getting to know the people, talking to them, building these relationships. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to establish yourself as an expert and they're going to want to use you. Now, how the heck, if I'm a busy business owner, can I bid more work or how can I bid more volume of work? Like I can't, I can't, I can't even figure it out with what I have right now. Super simple. You got two choices. One, you can either hire someone at $120,000 a year or 80 to $120,000 a year, or you can outsource your estimate. Boom, my company, we started back in 2016 helping contractors estimating. So now all this videos and training and all that stuff is, we've, only, we've been doing it for a few years, but our bread and butter, our expertise is on bidding jobs. I have 3,000 clients or more, 3,100 clients that I've worked with at this point, and these are GC subs, developers, these are all, you name it. And we've been able to help those guys really scale up their business because they don't have to worry about the estimating. So if you're in a position where you're like, you know what, I need help estimating, I need somebody to do it right now, I don't wanna, I just wanna execute, I'm gonna put a link, again, right above, where you can set up a call, see how we can help you with your estimating. We have on demand where it's like one at a time and we also have our estimating and leads program where we can help you on a recurring basis. So if you're a serious company, you're willing to grow, this is the way to do it. You don't need to go hire your own estimator. So that's a mission. I've done it, I have my own team. <laughs> All right, so now you're bidding jobs, you're getting leads, the machine's fully uh, on full functioning mode, right? You're bidding a bunch of jobs. The next thing you're gonna do is what I call prospect farming. Now. The idea here is that we wanna quickly identify the very best clients. We don't wanna waste time. You wanna find the people that are gonna give you the best chances of winning the job. You don't wanna just bid for everybody. Bid, 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 bid. That's what everybody does. What we wanna do is be strategic about it. So phase one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go broad. We're gonna bid up for a bunch of different companies. So you wanna bid like a lot of jobs for a lot of people. And then what we're gonna do is once we start finding out who's giving us attention, when we go visit them, they're going to give us feedback. They're going to tell us that they want to work with us. They're going to give us good indicators. And it's not rocket science to see who's going to work with you. It's almost like a gut feeling. They're going to be those guys that they don't answer your call. You, they go ghost. They don't have time to get back to you. When you go visit, they're a little bit of a jerks. Like, oh, you're interrupting my day. Man, if you go visit people, like, how are they going to do that to you? They're not going to work with you. So cut them off your list and replace them with someone new. Because what you want is you want to identify five to ten. That's the number. Five to ten VIP clients that you want to go all in with. Like, Imagine you have all the poker chips, you wanna go all in. Then you activate this bid sprints. What you do is you wanna bid back to back to back to back to back as fast as possible for the same company because now they're gonna seriously consider you. They see your name pop up on the proposal over and over and over and over and over. They're gonna take you more seriously. And if you bid 10 or 20 jobs back to back to back to back to back for the same company, very quickly you're gonna determine if it's gonna be a good fit for you and they're gonna see you as a serious person because they're not gonna wanna lose you as a bidder if they're not gonna give you something. And, and one of the things that GCs do is they have their, their like number one you know, sub for each trade. 
and then they have like their number two and their number three and what they do is they can't give everything to the number one guy so they give some to the number two and they give a little bit to the number three so what we want to do is work our way up to become the number one guy all right you can only do that if you bid consistently boom, 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 boom. all right and then what's going to happen is phase four is we're going to do this for several months but the first round in phase three we're going to go all in on bidding but we're going to use our gut feeling to identify those people in phase four we're going to use data by data i mean how many jobs did we bid for these guys how many did they win and how many did they give us because they can't give you a project if they don't win it the other thing too is you don't want to align with people that aren't good closers you want to only work with the good closers that's it if not you're going to be spinning your wheels you're going to be bidding 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 and they're not going to win jobs all right so congratulations up to this point you've built up an amazing sales system your sales system right now is better than 99 percent of construction companies out there the next thing you're going to need to do is become very good at closing now i've shown you how to get like a bunch of leads in the door and now we're going to work on your closing rate so you can shoot up that percentage of success all right so watch this video right over here which is 27 ways to negotiate your construction projects